and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Welcome this morning to our service here at St. Mark's Anglican Lutheran Church, but not just here, because this morning's message comes to us from St. David Anglican Lutheran Church in Aurelia with my sister in faith, Pastor Lori Pilatska, sharing with us and also with Westside Lutheran Church in Barrie. Welcome to you all. And a big and warm thank you to all you members of St. Mark's. We received already many ballots from our annual vestry meeting last Sunday, and in spite of us keeping a safe distance from one another, we certainly have not moved away from one another. Thanks be to God. Now I invite you to join with me in prayer. Holy God, through your Son you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we have Sue with us this morning again, and here she comes. Martin? Yes? Are you angry or something? Uh, no. Why? I don't know. You look different. But no, I I'm not angry. Good, because you better not be angry. You are a pastor, and, and you ought to always be joyful and optimistic and nice. Always, just like Jesus. Oh, who, Sue, but, but Jesus wasn't always nice. Oh, that's an excuse. You're making that up. No, seriously. Like... When, when he disregarded his own family one time in Nazareth, or, or when he got really mad at the people using the temple to conduct their business for personal profit. Did they do that? You betcha. And Jesus was not happy with them. He kicked them out altogether. And I'm sure his language while doing that wasn't wasn't really nice. Yeah, when you people fall in love with your possessions and your ideas and plans, then there's no more room for God. It's all you, 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 and everybody else suffers. Exactly, Sue. I wish we people could see it as clearly as you, our Sunday school puppet, does. Now I can see that you're not angry. Thanks be to God. Amen. In the cross of Christ I glory, towering o'er the wrecks of time. All the light of sacred story gathers round its head sublime. When the woes of life o'ertake me, hopes deceive and fears annoy, never shall the cross forsake me, lo, it glows with peace and joy. Let us now listen to the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the Gospel of John from the second chapter. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, 
and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Good news. The gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to, you, to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. When the sun of bliss is beaming, light and love upon my way. From the cross, the radiance streaming adds more luster to the day. Bane and blessing, pain and pleasure By the cross are sanctified Peace is there that knows no measure Joys that through all time abide Well, greetings in the name of Christ to all of you, Pastor Martin and the people of St. Mark's Anglican Lutheran Church in Midland, Pastor Anne and her flock, the people of Westside Lutheran Church in Barrie. You may remember way back in 2019, we began a pulpit exchange during Lent, where the three of us pastors got to come and visit you in your church homes. Let us pray that we can be in person again next year. How many of you grew up with something like this hanging on the walls of your home? Or maybe your grandparents' home? This particular plaque hung in our family's upstairs hallway for all of the years that I lived in my, lived my childhood there, plus a few more as an adult. I passed this plaque coming and going each day as I lived. Our reading from Exodus is familiar to anyone who spent years going to Sunday school and having to learn the Ten Commandments and Luther's small catechism. Now, depending on when you attended Sunday school and confirmation for that matter, will reveal how deep you went into memorizing and learning. And learning the commandments wasn't enough for our Lutheran education. We also had to know, thus is thus. What does this mean? We are to fear and love God so that we, dot, 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 and what follows is Martin Luther's meaning to each of the Ten Commandments. Luther wanted God's people to have a deeper understanding of what God is inviting us to participate in, a life of living out God's unconditional love to the world. The first words that God speaks in the Exodus passage are words of identification and relationship. I am your God. And this is followed by a summary of leading us to salvation. 
I am the one who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. As important as God's action is, the second person pronoun is just as important. I am your God. You are the people whom I have saved. These people do not travel alone. They are claimed. And these people are a community. Moses passes the commandments onto the whole of the camp. Well, at least a large number of people. However individual these words may seem to be, and the commands are grammatically singular, they paint a picture of a community, one in which the name of the Lord will be honored, one in which there will be work and rest in turn, one in which life and faithfulness will be valued. For the past couple of weeks, I've had the privilege to participate in the Zoom sessions offered to us by the Eastern Synod with Reverend David McGinley. David is a Lutheran pastor who serves as a hospital chaplain in Nova Scotia. David has had a life experience with cancer, four times in fact, and he has shared with us his death experience. His having to return from the great beyond led David to share this Lenten series with us. And he began by reminding us the astonishing surprise, often not realized until the end of life, is that you are more than you could imagine. For you emanate from and are sustained by God, even more that you and reality are so much more than you could comprehend. It is for we measly humans difficult on a good day to take this in, let alone trying to see ourselves as beloved, caring and loving folk in the midst of a global pandemic. But maybe this wilderness time is for each of us an opportunity to draw closer to the one who also spends time in the wilderness. We are anointed through the ritual of baptism. A ritual, according to David, is an intention combined with an action and an object for the purpose of tuning your consciousness to God, to spirit, and to love. A ritual is done in a specific way and not done for the individual alone, but to awaken and affirm that we are connected to community and something far greater. It tunes our consciousness to affirm our identity as part of this greater reality through which we live, move, and have our being. Something so beautiful that we, you, and I get to share in and be a part of. David reminded us authentic, healthy spirituality is one where we are not the center stage. It is done for the benefit of others. Why? Because what you do unto others, you do unto yourself. And that which you do to yourself, you do unto others. So healthy spirituality elevates everyone, not just ourselves. A few weeks ago, we were blessed with a taped sermon by Bishop Michael Price, part of the After Epiphany sermon series by our Lutheran bishops across Canada. And in his message, Bishop Michael asked us if we were communities that were in the church business or in the people blessing business. That question has resonated with me ever since, as we here at St. David seek to be in missional ministry for God's people. 
We are very clear our building serves a purpose, but it's not our mission. Our mission calls us to journey together to grow in faith and serve God's world. The building is simply a place from which we live out this ministry, where we worship and are fed to journey with others. Jesus, having just performed his first miracle at the wedding in Cana, where he turned water into wine at his mother's request, travels to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. But when he arrives at the temple, he finds merchants bustling among their animals, money changers busily exchanging coins, tradespeople bartering, and seeking priests to complete sacrificial rituals. Rather than praising those gathered, Jesus goes into a full-blown rage, creating a whip and chasing out the animals, scattering the merchants after them. Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house an emporium. So Jesus effectively turns the temple court into a tumult of frightened animals and shouting merchants, while pilgrims and priests stand aghast. Rather than a scene of spiritual preparation, Jesus sees instead a place focused on monetary exchange. For the writer of John, when people focus too much on a physical location, they miss out on God's glory standing right in front of them. Rather than coming to a physical temple or church building, we need instead to come to Jesus. And in doing so, we worship in spirit and truth wherever we may be, and we can see for ourselves God's glory as we remember God's love made manifest in Jesus. My beloved siblings in Christ, this is the life that we have signed on to through the waters of our baptism. Through the ritual of baptism, we take on a new identity and we are anointed. Everything we say, think, feel, and do demonstrates how we are Christ to each other. How we live affects and impacts others. For what we do unto others, we do unto ourselves. And that which we do unto others ourselves, we do unto others. So as we know God is love, then so may we be. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like This 
is what I pray. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. May I be like you. And now I invite you to join me in prayer. As we, relying on the promises of God alone, pray boldly for the church, the world, and for all in need, saying, Hear us, O God, and responding with, your mercy is great. There is no God before you. Cleanse the faith of your followers that we, your people, place our trust in nothing beside you. Your name is holy. Guide your church that in every situation, your people's words and actions honor your name. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The heavens declare your glory. Renew your creation damaged by our ignorance, self-centeredness, and lack of faith. Provide leaders in the struggle for clean air and water. Protect your creatures and crops that need healthy ecosystems. Give all people willingness to repent when our way of life pollutes the earth and skies, hear us, O God, your, your mercy is great. Your foolishness is wiser than any human wisdom. Fill leaders with the wisdom of your peace and mercy. Your law defends the vulnerable. Work through legislators, judicial systems, and systems of law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of all, especially the members of the First Nations of these lands. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy. mercy is great. Your weakness is stronger than all human strength. Protect those who are vulnerable and give courage to all who are suffering. In a moment of silence, we bring before you persons and situations we care about in this moment. Defend, O God, victims of crime and bring redemption to those who harmed others. Give Sabbath rest to all who labor, especially to all workers providing medical and personal care. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You call us to proclaim Christ crucified. Give clarity to this congregation and to our leaders so that we might follow Christ beyond our own habits and comfort. Clear out anything in our common life that would obscure the gospel or that serves our own interests. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy is great. And so we entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. My peace I give unto you. It's a peace that the world cannot give. 
It's a peace that the world cannot understand. Peace to know, peace to live, my peace I give unto you. And now may God, the Creator, strengthen you. May Jesus, the Beloved, fill you with goodness. And may Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you. So blesses you, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. And now live in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.